I will now call to order the March 11, 2019 meeting of the East Hampton Conservation Commission. The meeting is being recorded. Are there any public concerns or non-agenda items? All right. Being none, we will move on to public hearings and meetings. First item is a public hearing, abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by Beacon Solar LLC, Mass to EP file number 151300, seeking confirmation of various wetland boundaries at 50 Florence Road, Map 115, Lots 2 and 5, continued from January 13, 2019. Mm -hmm. According to our annotated agenda, we have received a check for the peer third party review, which has been turned over to the treasurer on March 4th. We're awaiting clearance for proposal execution. So when do you expect that, Mallory? Um, I am not sure. I have to go check in with um, the treasurer or the auditor to see if it's cleared yet. Um, I did send an update to, which I believe I forwarded to everyone earlier today, um, <coughs> to the applicant and to the peer reviewer stating that I had turned it over so mm -hmm. that they can anticipate that they will be moving forward shortly. Okay. Weather permitting? Yes. Okay. All right. No other updates there? No. All right. Next item. Request for determination of applicability from one industrial loss LLC for vegetation clearing and slope improvements within the buffer zone of various wetland resource areas and in, the, and in bordering lands of flooding at 0 Arthur Street and 1 Ferry Street, Map 131, parcels 1 and 2. Is it okay if I put it on the table, or do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Um, unless, do you folks want to be able to see clearly? Okay. Of course not. <coughs> um, thank you for the record. I'm Rob Lebeck from Rob Lebeck Associates. Um, we filed an RDA with Mr. Michon. Um, you're familiar with the project. We uh, conducted a site visit out here for a notice of intent that we had filed in association with the redevelopment of the project site. Um, Kind of during that site visit, <laughs> I think Mike kind of mentioned that he wanted mm -hmm. to clear um, some of the vegetative obstructions along the, the edge of the bike path. Um, so kind of explained to him that we can't just go ahead and do that. Um, so we filed a request for determination of applicability, which arguably doesn't have a lot of detail on it, um, but basically uh, delineates the area that Mike would like to clear um, the vegetation from. And, and kind of re we'll call repair uh, the slope, so to speak. Um, I think probably the best thing uh, would be to probably do a site visit to make sure we understand, and Mike understands exactly what the commission's potential needs <coughs> are, and vice versa. We mm -hmm. understand what exactly Mike wants to do out there. If that wouldn't be too much trouble. I think that would be the most logical thing at this point. And then based on that site visit, we could provide you with more detail uh, as necessary for any you know, any of the, you know, the areas of concern. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, what you would like to do is basically, you would like to, I believe, take everything off of that slope and, and re, you know, loan and reseed it. Um, the potential for disturbance of the ground plane obviously is, you know, something we're, we're going to be careful of. We certainly would have our road controls. He'd likely blanket the slopes because they're all pretty much over three to one, or at least at three to one. Um, so I think I think it. I think for both the commission and for us, we should probably do a site visit. If you remember that mm -hmm. we walked, I think to about mm -hmm. about here, the canal falls here, so it's basically on both sides of the, of the canal. Which is where the slope is the steepest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can see right here, it's really tight. Mm -hmm. so. Is there any regrading planned? Um, no, and we're not planning on uh, affecting bordering land subject to flooding, although there is some impacts just because of the area and where it falls, um, but it would be regraded as is. There's not any change to the slope from what I've been told. Now, Mike may have different interpretations of that. Well, that's kind of why I want to do a site visit to make sure we're all on the same page, because, you know, what I would expect versus what Mike is expecting. I think we need to make sure we're, we're clear. Okay. So I guess I just want to go over. So this this is the plan we received. There were no other sheets. Correct. Um, and 
this is clear vegetation and debris. What page you have? Um, on the first page of the narrative. Yep. Under project description. Mm -hmm. So proposes to clear vegetation and debris. Uh, slope will be repaired and reseeded in areas of disturbance of silt fence erosion control barrier. His proposal along the down gradient extent of the work. So I guess I have just off the bat, um, I have some concerns about the steepness of the slope mm -hmm. and the extent and nature of work that's proposed. Um, I do too. <laughs> sure, and and I do uh, question without. Um, what is the detail down there? So I have some concerns about extent of disturbance, mm -hmm. um, you know, but working BLSF aside, um, extent of disturbance on the steepness of the slope in the buffer zone um, and the proximity to um, the yeah. channelized resource area. Mm -hmm. um, so those are uh, some of my concerns, the responses to some preliminary comments that Mallory said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the whole disturbance is 36,515 square feet, um, and almost 12,000 of that is in buffer zone. Um, while I recognize that there's no regulatory criteria, um, the recommendations for a negative determination mm -hmm. are below those thresholds. Um, uh, 5,000 square feet of disturbance in buffer zone, more than 50 feet from the resource area boundary. Are you um, saying you want to notice? I'm saying I want to do a site visit. I'm just okay. calling out some of the concerns that I have yep. um, relative to guidance that's out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we do folks have time for a site visit in the near future? We have daylight, we could do... Do you know how snow covered it is at this point? <coughs> I'm guessing there's, so that's south, what, what's the direction? So, so, south 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 so that's probably right not too bad. Are, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know, I have to look at it. I haven't yeah, built every I should say. Might want to wait a little bit. I think we're going to get some melt this week. We got a couple mm -hmm. of 50, 50 plus degree days like Thursday, Friday, yeah. but if you want to do it maybe next week. Mm -hmm. Do we want to see how it looks? By the end of the weekend, and maybe we, try to do something next Monday evening. Sure. Is that okay? Do you want to schedule a tentative time? Uh, five thirty. Let's do five thirty or sure. six, maybe. You're you're shaking maybe. your head. Maybe. Maybe. Tentatively five thirty. Okay. So let's do that. You want so. to confirm on Sunday or Monday after? What would you like to confirm? What's the pressure? I think we'll probably know by the end of the weekend if conditions are conducive. Mm -hmm. no, so, I know. okay, so let's. Do you want to make the call, Melissa? Sure. Okay. So I'll we'll confirm by Sunday evening. Tender play Monday, Monday the 18th at 5.30 p.m. Caveat, I won't be able to make it then, but I'll take a look on that. Sorry, <laughs> I'll be able to all day. So. What's that meeting spot? Uh, we could meet probably. Um, it's tough. Park about we, we can park across. Can park there. Park across. Yeah. We're in that car. Yeah, and then okay. maybe maybe we'll meet at the uh, bike trail here. Sure. Mm -hmm. Out of the bike trail. Sure. Great. All right. Uh, and you said five thirty. Yes. Great. Thank you. And confirm Sunday evening. Great. By via email. That's yes. It. Okay. Great. Yeah. Very good. Appreciate your time. Thank I'll you for coming you. in. See you then. Thank you. Riverside Industries, Mass to EP file number 151290, One Cottage Street Bridge Replacement across Broad Brook. Anyone here for this? No. 
They said that they weren't going to be sending the um, consultant. They would prefer if we just. Okay, that makes email. sense. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? It looks like there's a lot of gravel going into the channelized stream. Washing in? Yeah. And but I don't because really it, Because it's plowing a little bit, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So there's all of that. There's a parking area. I don't know if it people were parking there before. But it's dirt and gravel. And it looks like they're plowing it. Right to the, the edge. Water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right and to we, the edge of the water. And it's been nothing with Riverside about this before, where they were plowing up to and into the stream channel. So. This is better than it was in the past, but it's still. Happening? Right, right on the edge of going over the edge. But is that related to, that's a separate issue? It's a separate issue since, well, it's all part of what the construction site was at one point right. because they're still mm -hmm. you know, moving some material that was left by the construction. It looked like that area, when I went back and looked at the aerials, it looked like it has been previously had some sort of gravel on it, but the stone that's there is very fine. It's like blue crystal. Yeah, so it, it's What's very like stone dust. Kind of, yeah, I think so. I was, I can't, I, I haven't been there in a while, so I can't remember. And it, it was very, like with the it was snow very, melt, it's just being washed. Right yeah, now. I questioned them about that, and they kind of, the contractor kind of pushed it off, and so I, you know, they just wanted to take out their silk fence, and it seemed stable enough at the time, so it allowed them to take the silk fence so they could um, open the bridge up, but. So do we want to hold off for now since there's so much snow still on the brown surface and see what it looks like see what it looks like at, no, at our next meeting? Yeah. Okay. So motion to continue to March twenty fifth at six PM. <laughs> motion to continue. March twenty fifth at six PM. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Could we ask them to put some sort of curve there to prevent that from happening? March 26th, sorry. Um, oh, sorry, 25, you're right. Um, if you can point out to me like um, exactly where it is, then I will ask the contractor to put it back, the silk fence, back in that area. But okay. they might be a little Could they actually get a silk fence in the ground right now? What'd you say? Could they actually get a silk fence in the ground right now? I don't think so because I touched some soil today and it's very gross. It's so <laughs> um, what could we ask them to do? I mean, you could just say you need to prevent this material from migrating from the construction site into if I mean, it's a result could, of construction. Yeah. I mean, they could try to put some, like, hay bales up, some straw. Mm -hmm. I mean, that... I don't want to tell them to put sill fence in and not have them actually, like, right, be have able it to be do feasible it. Yeah. right yeah. now. Um, yeah, they could... I mean, nothing would stop them from putting down some bales. I mean, they could... They're not going to be able to stake them in, but mm -hmm. they might still work. Did you find it on the map, Jay? Well, it was kind of, if you're coming from the riverside, it was, there was one stretch where there was kind of plow a swath right in to that edge. And that's where the parking was along here and the yeah. bridge is along if I, there. If I and now they're also, I mean, it looks like they've... This is from uh, today, so... Oh, it was? Yes. Okay, I came back later. And then, so I guess, like, right before this meeting, this okay. snow had melted, so I it see. just looked like more of it. But there was a lot of soil that was dragged up in this that was yeah. all mixed in that snow pile. Can I see your picture? <laughs> <coughs> this is from... Uh, Where is that? That's coming, uh, heading towards Riverside. You're still on the other from side cottage. of the bridge. Uh, are from you on the cottage street, cottage street through the whole parking lot. This is the cottage, cottage street side, right? Right, so the bridge would have been, will be right here. Yeah, so There's this is that like parking cars. area that yes, they had. Yes, that's kind of a more hole anyways. Yeah, it looks like they just put stone dust uh, on it and it's still, and now it's like mud. Basically. Because they dragged it up when they plowed it. but They didn't put a whole lot down. Stuff material down. It seems like there's nothing to keep that all from eroding over time. So. Yeah, I think I would like to see what it looks like in the spring, but it, it, they could put some stuff up to prevent it from entering into the channel. I think we've always had concerns about their plowing operations. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So. Uh, do we have any emergency certs that are not listed, Mallory? No. Great. Enforcement actions. Bernard Gall, 37 South Street. No. No. Bernard Gall, vicinity Groveland. No. 
Uh, no. I actually go back to 37 South Street. I mm -hmm. think I had asked. Um, if Please you email info. Email, us. yes. Please, if you can check your. Um, and I'll try to remind you guys via email as well. Okay. Um, autumn properties, same? Correct. Yeah, if you have anything on that, it would be really helpful. Uh, Cernak on hold for the web for the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. St. Bridget Cemetery, Our Lady of the Valley Parish, Everett Street, Map 145, Lot 37. Yeah, so this one got pushed back. I had um, my draft eaten by the power outage, unfortunately. So um, I got to print it out, but I didn't get to keep it on my computer. So um, we pushed that back, and I also prioritized the River Valley issuance. Mm -hmm. um, so I have it complete now. But I just wasn't able to get to the post office today. So it's tomorrow. I'm going to issue it tomorrow. Um, I pushed back the dates of mm -hmm. my meeting. Okay. Date. Okay. When was the power added? Um, It was the day of your meeting. The last meeting. Two weeks ago. Oh, the windstorm. Yeah. Okay. I was in one of the lucky areas. <laughs> Uh, open space updates, Echo Dale West Orchard Area Improvements. So, oh. looks like you connected with Andrew Morrison? Yes. So, I ran into Chris Politan at the MAC conference, mm -hmm. and apparently they shut down for the winter. Oh. Interesting. So, <laughs> they can't do any work in the winter, so they shut down for like two months. Yeah, I, I had that. Andrew had kept saying that he worked very like limited amount of time. Like I think they still do some things, but mm -hmm. they they kind of have been somewhat operating on a seasonal sort of basis um, where they're not really available. Um, okay. Well, I'm glad you guys connected. When were you able to reach uh, today? Yeah, we had an appointment at one, um, and I think he missed me initially. He didn't pick up, um, but he called me back, and so we talked for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so we went through um, the options for moving forward, and basically he spoke to me about how the, basically all of the treatments are centered on the bittersweet um, and trying to, like, to manage it in relation to the tree removal. So now we haven't been able to remove the trees. Um, he had a specific area and he said, told me that he was gonna go um, into the field and get some GBS points on like that area so that we have an exact idea of where they will, they are focusing their treatments on. Um, so I think that is in direct relation to trying to plan well. The other thing we spoke about was the nesting bird uh, m and mowing in relation to that, the possibility of them doing the mowing. Um, they charge a thousand dollars to do it. Mm -hmm. um, basically there are three treatments left. They're all foliar and it seems like that would work if we were able to get down some of the trees um, and it would probably make things more effective because we wouldn't have vines in the trees they would you know we would get trees down mm -hmm. and the area mowed and then doing three foliar treatments on that area sh should help a lot um so my question was about moving forward with tree removal um and whether or not you wanted to try to pursue doing some tree removal during a dry time in the summer, or if you wanted to wait until another year. When are these, what's the schedule for these three treatments? Um, so they're all summer treatments. So they're like follow-up treatments. So the dates of them can be changed. Um, what I was kind of initially thinking was maybe we, what we could do is have, um, a certain area like the back what we had been talking about was the how the back section of the orchard is very thickly densely planted mm -hmm. um, and basically 
trying to individually cut trees back there and they're all diseased um, it's just not probably going to be cost effective or really that helpful so I don't know about doing major land disturbance but maybe just getting those trees kind of clear cut mm -hmm. um, and doing a mowing well and then going after and doing a foliar treatment this summer so the trees would be cut first then the mowing uh, yeah or they could I mean it would be the way that I wrote the RFP like I could put in a mowing into the to get the contractor to either mow it mm -hmm. or I mean they're gonna tr probably trample it mm -hmm. so I don't know if they would feel that if they would want to do that <laughs> but we could have it mowed by land stewardship after mm -hmm. or by Russell if he's available I just don't want to rely or like worry mm -hmm. about his putting a burden on him mm -hmm. Um, did land stewardship express a preference as to when the mowing occurred relative to the tree removal? Um, no, they basically related the mowing more so towards, they, they said it didn't really matter, but they related the mowing more towards, uh, you know, getting into doing spraying, number one, for foliar treatment, and because there being less area that they could, you know, more effectively target the area if they can get into it as opposed to having high brush and having um, a lot of vines in mm -hmm. the trees and whatnot so that's the way that they had to describe it they like about I think about like a month in between the cutting and the foliar treatment is what they kind of recommend mm -hmm. So do we want to, because we have about a thousand dollars of contingency, is that correct? Um, I have to look at the exact numbers, but the biggest problem was, was the, um, is the, the fact that we didn't price out the, um, the tree removal correctly, because we have to pay specific rates for that. So, um, I think the tree removal is going to be more expensive, which was another reason why it seemed to mm -hmm. make sense to do like a clear cut, um, or a, you know, just a major removal as opposed to just trying to selectively mm -hmm. remove some, like we'll, we could leave the ones that are kind of in the front at this point, but they're more sparse. Mm -hmm. It's the ones in the back that are really bad. So, um, Jay, I know you've been well there with me recently. What's yeah. your, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I thought it would be easier if some mowing occurred so you had access to the trees to do the removal, that's all. Mm -hmm. um, just because some of it's so overgrown yeah. with everything. Yeah, I mean, we, we could do a mowing first before we did them, but we, I could... Because you, you say mowing, but it's really like brush hogging. It's brush hogging, yes. Yeah, it's, I guess I'm being... A it's annihilating everything <laughs> that's... Right, I mean, like, you tree. can't just drive up to things. It's yeah. not grassy, herbaceous material. It's Yeah. Like, it's very it. sweet. It's Rosa. It's mm -hmm. miserable. I guess I was thinking in like that back orchard part. It's not as thick back there. There's just more trees. There's you know, it's trees, densely planted trees. Yeah, but they're not in really good shape. They're no, they're hard. They're in really bad condition. But there's not as much brush or right. you know woody material back there besides those trees because they're all planted so closely together. Mm -hmm. um, so it might not be necessary, um, but. I think I would try to, it would probably be easier to roll it into having the contractor do it rather than scheduling it separate with, with um, land stewardship. I think in the future for the two other years of follow-up treatment in the summer of that, um, it certainly would make more sense for, for land stewardship to do it because then they would be sure when they went out, mm -hmm. they could plan to their herbicide treatment better. Mm -hmm. And then there's the money concern mm -hmm. as well. Um, I'm not going to know how much it's going to cost until I price it out, basically. So can you do that? Yeah, I mean, the only real option is for me to do, do I have to actually do an RFP. And then, I mean, technically, there's still money in the open space fund. So it's not like, I, I don't think that we wouldn't be able to pay for it. It would just be what where we would, that money would come from. Um, we could like still go back to the CPA and ask them for more money. Well, let's find out what we would need to ask for 
Okay. First. The committee would prefer that it's one number or not, you know, go back three times. That's right. All. Yeah. Well, I my understanding was, was that we weren't really supposed to put out an RFP unless we had the money to pay for something. So it's sort we of like... We do have the money to pay for something. So I well, think yeah. we can... Yeah, something has to. I think, I think it's worth doing, getting a, a firm price and say, go back to CPA and say, hey, this is what we thought we were doing. This is what it is now. Here's the number. Yeah. And, and see what happens. Well, yeah, I guess that's what I was saying was there is money in the open space fund, like to say that you could potentially use that. So even if you don't end up using that money, you could go mm -hmm. to, this, you know, you could. But I, I think I got to put it out. So um, would you? I have no idea what it's going to cost, but that back area was like a specific note um, for removal. Um, is there other area? Did you? I just want to be sure of what areas where I'm putting the, on. Well, we, we had a rough map, and we, we tried to tag a few things, but I don't know what tags were left at this point. Well, I think we changed mm -hmm. it. Some of our discussions changed about it, so I just want to make sure that we're on the same page about. No, we talked about doing more of uh, a clear, either a clearing or a clear cut in the back areas, so just the ones around the wetlands, and then the hair leaving the heritage trees mm -hmm. and all of that that comes becomes a little bit more like laborious as opposed to just clear. So, did you want to just try to wrap everything into it? I think so. Okay. So it sounds like then we might need a more extensive mowing of like the entire mm -hmm. orchard then as well. Okay. Yeah. As long as they stay outside the wetland. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I'm trying to remember how we got the prices for a tree clearing last time. Did we use like general business practices and it says it was less than ten thousand dollars or something like that. I forget what it was. Yeah. Uh, sounds familiar. Yeah. It was just that you didn't that we didn't use the um prevailing wage. Prevailing wage was right. part yeah. of it. And I think they were gonna take the wood that they harvested and do something with it. Mm -hmm. That was part of the interest in the, yeah. the person that wanted to do the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe we were told that it didn't need to be put out to bid because of the less than 10000 And I met with KMP and King J. King J, yeah. That gave that quote. K -J. I didn't know anything about the family. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, at the time we didn't you know that was going to be an issue or mm -hmm. could have been an issue. Mm -hmm. um, I can talk to the treasurer about whether or not they could, like, any profits that they get. For, uh, from the wood, whether or not that could be subtracted from our final. I bill. think they, I think that was part of their price was they were going to take the wood and then do yeah. something with it. So I think that's why the price was so low for doing the tree removal because they they wanted the wood. Not that it's great, but it's good for like barbecues and stuff. It could right? be good for barbecues and things like that, right? <laughs> okay, I'll I'll have some discussions about what our limitations are. Okay. Okay, compliance updates. Ready? Mm -hmm. So, Pleasant Street Mills, Mass to EP file number 151273. Mallory, you have a note here that says you have spoken with the city planner and you, on behalf of the city, can record the extension and bring that into compliance. Yeah, that so. Something you're going to do? Yeah, so he was, he, he still doesn't know how he's going to pay for it. Um, I think he was trying to figure that out. I, he has two other ones from the that we read yeah, yeah that he has to issue that he has to record i said that maybe this one time you might be okay with paying for it but he's gonna he he hasn't said that he necessarily needs it yet so i'm gonna go record it there and then melissa um and jeff are gonna like work out how not to this pay for it. <laughs> melissa's the um, financial director yes heard that one what um, does it cost to record 75 dollars for that fee right for an okay. order yeah, so if you're not okay with that, uh, do let me know. But if, in general, I would defend against it when it's like a city, it's a city project, like they, there should be money for them to do that. I would like to imagine that we have more than $75 <laughs> that we can use for things like this. I mean, that is part of the cost of <laughs> permitting. Right. 
So, um, granted, I don't think the city anticipated for that particular project that there would be an extension. Right. Um, but we wouldn't report it on anyone else's behalf. Yeah, I mean, you can though, technically, like legally you can. So if somebody fails to report something, you can do it. But so I guess, but, but, but as a but practice, in general, I don't think we would do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, yes. So I support you in saying that yes. like that shouldn't be your expense to bore, to bear. Um, I mean, we have a very limited budget, so I would prefer, I understand all city yeah. departments have limited budgets. Um, yeah. My guess is every city department is saying, oh, we, <laughs> we can't really use this. We're going to end up recording that. every DPW yeah. permit <laughs> this point forward. Yeah. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess the, the strong preference is not to do that. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, Lathrop, DP file number 151283, Invasive Plant Management, no updates? No updates. Okay, it's hard to... See the line. Yeah. Okay, so Williston Northampton School, 151286, no updates? Correct. City of East Stanton, 151288, National Island Pond Aquatic Veg Management, no updates? Correct. Movement Properties, DP file number 151287, Alpha Neal Street, new commercial facility, no updates. Correct. Riverside Industries, file number 151290, Wonka Street Bridge, continued to our next hearing. James Legrand. No. City of East Hampton, Broadbrook, no. Whitebrook. Oh, uh, yes, actually there was the <coughs> they supported the down. Army Corps. <coughs> um. Sorry, could you say that again? I mean, I for I didn't yes. even fully read it. I got I think it was I got it today, or uh, it was from the Army Corps. I think it was like a it was a permit that I. They basically are saying the only thing that was outstanding is it's DEP, it's like water quality sort of sort okay. of like they, they don't have it yet. Okay. Shocker. Mm -hmm. Neither does anybody. <laughs> <laughs> what uh? What do you call those core things? Uh, Department of the Army permit. No, but it's a, it's a, general are, permit. It's a that? registration under, under B PCN. It's a PCN registration response mm -hmm. or something like that. Something right? like that. There's I no have word to look for at. it. You know. Anyways. Yeah. No, they don't have a nice, neat little header. Anyways. Are you ready? Uh, Holistic Industries, DP file number 151296, 155 Northampton Street, parking lot and site improvements and city stormwater permit. Uh, they were supposed to be doing asbestos removal, but I haven't seen them out there at all. Okay. So. Well, that's interior, right? They had some stuff on the roof as well. Okay. But at our last meeting, you had they done pre-construction? They did it to the extent that I required them to do it for that mm -hmm. work. Um, and then when they go to do external, any anything else mm -hmm. beyond um, minor asbestos payment on the roof, they're gonna need to fulfill the remainder of the requirements. So okay. um, they're good, I just, they I just don't know what's going on with them. Provide, did they provide their stormwater bond? Yes. Okay, so right them, yeah, sorry, that was in there. Yeah, they provided a cash bond, which is kind of, um, there's not, there wasn't very good, there's not a lot of good language about that, either the ordinance or the order conditions about how, because most of it hinges on a performance bond, mm -hmm. and there being terms and conditions outlined for that, so I think in the future, like, with cash bonds, figuring out how, like, that there needs to be some sort of terms and conditions, because otherwise there aren't any. Hmm. Okay. So if someone wants to, has any interest in figuring, writing some language for that or figuring out how to handle that, uh, would be helpful. I don't expect many cash bonds in the future though. I was hoping. Uh -huh. <laughs> do you get paid in cash today from your tenants? Well, not usually. So, um, <laughs> you know. It doesn't work like that anymore. Well. Okay, one industrial loss LLC, DP file number 151298 and 299, tracks one and two, one Ferry Street. 
East Hampton Park One Solar LLC, DEP file number 151293, large scale solar project 232 Park Street. Uh, no updates. River Valley Co op, Mass DEP file number 151301 for site redevelopment for a new supermarket and related site work. Uh, issued that on the 4th. Excellent. All right, general business. So, wait, what's the expiration date? 3 4 2022. Imagine we don't have a bond yet or anything. Oh no, I haven't heard anything. Oh, I, I did put the bond amount that um, the entity engineer uh, calculated, which was about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. I think we discussed that at the last. Meeting. Yep. Okay. Um, any meeting minutes? February twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. These were sent around as PDF. Need some adjustments. The adjustments have been made. There is no longer a force four and seven years ago this okay. meeting this review started. Hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> That's being absent, thank you. And Deanna was not a it's sitting not member at the in. time. Yeah. Moved yes. to approve the minutes of February 25, 2019, Check. amended as noted. All those in favor? I can't do it that fast, just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All those in favor. Aye. So moved. <laughs> Correspondence agent updates. Certificate. Can I go CFC requests? From who? Um, from a, it's a single family homeowner. It's um on, it's for a house. Is it an older project? Yes. <laughs> How did you know? Because we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Authorized any single family residences in the recent past. Oh, right. Somebody trying to say yeah. something. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is for 24 Holly Circle. H O L L? Yep, Holly, yep. Okay. H A W L E Y? No. <laughs> Uh, DEP file number? 151168. When was that issued? <laughs> Sorry. Snap. 11, <laughs> 11, 9, 98. Oh, I think it was a met, there was amendments as well, but that's the... Oh. Yeah. Um, do you have a copy of it there? The file? Have you located the there's file? There's multiple. <laughs> there's multiple files. Um, this is gonna. This is similar to Treehouse. Not as bad of a nightmare. Um, but basically, from what I had pulled up, there was only one plan in the original. The like one of the files that I pulled out. The um, the other f folder I haven't fully gone through yet. But um, in the first folder. The, it references the, a plan that I only have pages that are for utilities and replication and um, like drainage features in, in the roads. It doesn't have, it was like, you know how some of the projects, they didn't actually put the houses on them, mm -hmm. they just did the infrastructure. Um, I think it was one of those. And then some of the lots were sold off and the owners themselves put forth applications, but I don't think that th this was one of them because I haven't found anything that indicates that. So there may be other map plans that are just, that are associated with it, like other pages that are somewhere in. Um, so the house might have been on it. The house looks like, like it also- The whiteboard cuts, around, cuts across the back of the property. Oh. That's- Okay. Yeah. Part of the issue. Yeah. So, um, the attorney didn't really know what to do, so sh I just recommended, I said, well, you know, I don't see any other file immediately for this project that is for the house itself. So um, you can put the house on it and I can keep looking. They, they're trying to make a closing deadline, which I don't think that, I don't necessarily know that's gonna happen. Um, and I, I did rec say that we that does happen all the time and that usually it's the contingency that it's of the sale. Um, 
the um, utility work and the driveway, the driveways and the roads, um, all of that work was um, released in a partial COC for this lot. So if that was the only thing that was on that order, maybe some of the other work is the, the actual construction of the house it might be unapproved. I don't, I don't know. So is this something that you forwarded? I don't think so. I just got this today and I spoke to her last Thursday. She came to the office last Thursday to like talk about it and I looked through the file initially. Okay. Is this something you can forward to us as a PDF? Uh, yeah. So I just have the um, COC form um, that I can forward. But That's all they submitted? Yeah. I did pull the, um, she did put notebook and page for the partial. COC and I did, I had pulled up the, um, I had gone to the registry with her in my office, so I did look at it. Um, Do you know if the person who owns the property now is the original owner? I don't. I think I, it sounded like they weren't based off of what the attorney was saying, but I didn't specifically inquire about that. Okay. So this might be a so this will be on our, well, actually is, is sufficient information provided to include this on our next agenda? I think to the ability of the applicant um, in the sense of that the, the only way to find out a lot of this information is from the developer and or from public records and our records like for this just aren't in great shape. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to the extent that the applicant was capable of, yes, I, I do. I guess I'm concerned with you spending your time yeah. doing their file review. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, is that when somebody goes to review public records, I usually have to find stuff for them, or I have to be in the room with them. So it's sort of like, either way, it takes up my, you know, I don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a central, like, filing system in the mm -hmm. city where it's not too time okay. demanding. All right, so what you're saying is there's enough information to put this on the March 25th agenda. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time if I can't find it no, within. No, it's not worth that. And right. You don't have enough time to do the other things that are already queued up. Yes. So, um, mm -hmm. so we'll do our best. I also told her to send the, um, I also recommended that she send the uh, COC that was recorded, the partial, to the the attorney that's arguing with her about it because this is the file number. So it could literally just be for the drainage and for the utilities. Um, so the other attorney might just say that it's that's sufficient, that there was a partial issued and that she might drop it. But I think she's waiting for a response from the seller. All right. Fun. Uh, no update on Fort Hill Road? No, I did. I did. Um, I did get some secondhand information about that um, today. Um, my understanding is that the um, building inspector has been out there in the last week um, and that it may be, um, there might be a structure that there that, that I'm assuming there's a large ramp. Is that accurate that's part of what I heard yeah. okay so I guess he had noted that, that that might need to come down um, because it seems like it was not built with a building permit so that's an additional um, item um, the other thing is I wanted to get a little bit more detail um, about that so my understanding was is that the erosion that is happening is going down the driveway and then down the street into the Manhattan Crossing. Is that accurate? That's what I was told. Okay. Um, Jeff had told me that he had also kind of seen the area in question and had said that there was potentially BMX trails that ran through the woods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that he said that there was berms built up around the BMX area at the top of the slope and he said that he wasn't sure about whether or not there was any corrosion or sedimentation happening in that area. Do you know anything about the berms? I think what, um, Tom? It looks like piles of topsoil almost. Yeah, it's it's just Just piles of storage dirt. almost. Yeah, yeah, and I believe 
so I, I think he mentioned that it was coming down the driveway, but it may, I mean, the gist of what he said was that it is coming off of that BMX course, mm -hmm. off of those piles, onto the road, whether it's coming down the slope or through the driveway or both, I'm not certain. Okay. And from the road, then it's making its way into the river. Okay. It was hard to see with the snow what was really happening. <clears throat> That's all. But maybe by the end of the week, it'll be more apparent. Yeah. Sometimes the, um, I've had issues in the past where folks have had a lot of gravel ending up in a lake um, due to like their parking lot and it's very, can be very challenging to in, like have that be uh, enforcement because like you, it's diff challenging to prove that it was like specifically them doing it even if you have pictures of it sliding down um, and then like like quantifying that as a resource area alteration um, is also challenging. In so um, I think w what I would be most curious about looking at is whether he, some of that area is in jurisdiction um, where that was. Where the actual course was built? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I, you might know the area a little bit better than I. You don't? Okay. I don't know that area, but others may. Yeah. I know there's a slope and then it dropped it. It dramatically drops down. Well, if it's 200 feet, I don't know if it's more than 200 feet from the stream or not, but if it is, it's riverfront. Yeah, you might know the building permit. itself. No, because they were outside 200 feet yeah. with everything that they were doing when they built the brewery. Mm -hmm. Do you know how far? No. Because the the um, course is much closer to the stream than the building. Okay. How long has the course been there for? No idea. Okay. Whose land is it on? Is it all like them? one big parcel? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. I mean, from the building, it looks like it could be 500 feet to the river. As a can you put on the aerials on that? Yeah, but you can't so see it may or may not it's be. A, it's a beautiful summertime front. view of. So you can't really see anything that's going on. Google that looks like area. wetland right there. That edge right there. That looks like where the wetland starts. Well, I mean, I mean the, the river looks. River's like, way back. Yeah. So that looks. I mean, that's a hundred foot line there, so I mean, there's like at least 500 some, yeah. there. But again, with all the snow, it was hard to see anything that was. Yeah, I think happening. this is like where the slope really drops. drops. And this is where the piles were. I couldn't tell. You know, it was it was snow covered. Okay. So there's right. no file for them. They were There's no file for Cordhill. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. Uh, receipt of notice of intent. DEP file number one five one two nine seven filed by East Denver Park Solar One LLC for solar project at Westview Terrace Map one six five lot forty seven. Filed four ten twenty eighteen. Identified as date of filing by Mass DEP. No update. Correct. Um, I do have one other thing just to tell you. Okay. Um, so the planning board had an application um, for site plan approval and for the stormwater ordinance um, at 14 Industrial Parkway. Um, there is, there was a lot of wetlands over there that have been apparently historically disturbed. Um, there is a, an area um, between 14 and 16 Industrial Parkway um, that was flagged. Terry Reynolds is saying it's isolated. Um, I. I can't make, really make a call on it, and I am, and the seasonal conditions are not appropriate. Nope. So I have recommended that there be, you know, that he establish somehow that what the wetland type is, um, either by a formal filing or like whatever the planning board, um, like if the planning board would accept uh, a delineation from a qualified professional, they could mm -hmm. like assume beyond a reasonable doubt that they were applying the stormwater ordinance correctly. Um, however, I think that the applicant is extremely resistant to doing that and um, that they are going to end up putting it as a special condition that they have to come and get an, uh, you know, either an area determination or file an ANRAD um, or some sort of boundary determination. Um, with the commission as like a prior to and receive an appropriate um, determination um, or ORAD prior
prior to getting the building permit. So that was kind of the where things left off. I think I have some hesitations about that, but I mean, it's ultimately the planning board's decision about how they mm -hmm. choose to move forward. Um, so when was this area previously flagged? Um, I'm sorry, uh, you mean like was, is there any historical like documentation for that? Mm -hmm. Um, there is no, there isn't. I thought you said it had been flagged. Uh, no, no, no I, I might have said like I flagged it, I like see. based off of my knowledge of that area. Okay, I'm that area before. um, so that might be something that you eventually see. Um, there is a lot of disturbance in that area, and after going over. Some of the aerials in that picture, it looks like um, the Deeds construction yard has potentially altered um, a large part of a large wet piece of wetland um, mm -hmm. in the last 10 or so years, um, ongoingly. You have a filing in your um, cabinets from the 90s that has a delineation and that wetland pretty much doesn't exist anymore. It's very small. Has DEP identified it as an area that's been altered? Um, they have, well, they have it mapped as like a, I think they have it as, it might be isolate, listed as isolated. Um, I didn't like, I just come, come upon um, the mapping of it today where it's kind of done as a, they have it as a pond. Hmm. Where? It, is that, so in the past when there's been, um, a question of whether an area mm -hmm. was jurisdictional or had been altered. Um, DEP Western Region did provide support with aerial photo interpretation. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something you could reach out to Mark Stinson yeah. uh, to discuss? Yeah, so I mean, I yeah, that's basically what I did was I reviewed it. Like I would really love to see to have other people look at it. So mm -hmm. like I can ask Mark, but if if y'all want to also look at well, yeah, take a look uh, sure. as well, if you can yeah, kind of summarize the information like the project location and the parcel and yeah, I will send I can send you the um the planning board application as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll send you the planning board. Um, I did print out like a couple like two thousand five and present basically because I think that shows the biggest um, 2005 present um, 1995 are um, like the three dates I think that show it the clearest um, yeah th that that one that is by the Dietz's property is like mapped as a pond it's a bit very odd it's not it doesn't look anything like the delineation that was on the file okay that's all. Thank you. Um, and has there been any other discussion or updates regarding the Ladville Road property? No. Okay. Um, I know that there was one about the, um, there was like initial opinion about the, the uh, subdivision on off Crestview for the stormwater ordinance that was sent, but that was- Yes, the attorney good. doesn't think it applies. Yeah, which I, I don't really, I haven't written an opinion about it, really, but basically I mean, the wetlands rules don't follow the subdivision rules. Yeah, right. So, so but it doesn't make any sense because the ordinance is not specific to subdivision. It says all approvals, mm -hmm. and it's administered like by two bodies, so mm -hmm. it's not non-specific. So, like, if you didn't hold all your permits and they're not existing mm -hmm. into the present day, I don't necessarily see how that would. Um, that would be like an accurate interpretation of the ordinance and it could if it was accepted it could negatively impact the ordinance and, and limit its applicability well i definitely think that it should be looked into further because that seems rather opportunistic mm -hmm. um, from the owner's side oh well yeah i mean that's what he's paying his lawyer for so all right is there anything else this time well, just for reference, what was the topic on that last item? You would have felt about it. Crestview Circle, Holly Circle, White at White Brook. 
the undeveloped portion of the subdivision where during our yep. uh, safe visit to the Tomaszewski Tom mm -hmm. parcel um, mm -hmm. for uh, in the rain, cold rain, uh, we saw the road being built or excavation consistent with construction, preparation for construction of a road. Yep, gotcha. So this is the area in kind of southwest of Holly and Crestview. Yep, and they haven't gone back. There's, they said that they were getting back sometime in March about the storage in Riverfront, but they, we haven't heard yet. I guess mm -hmm. we can give them a little bit more. It's still March. Time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm assuming it took them a little while to put their opinion together, so. Okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved.